If you find yourself constantly putting off work, only to feel guilty when things pile up, you force yourself to focus but can't seem to make any progress, trust me, you are not alone. Everyone procrastinates, it's just part of being human. So you're not SOL, you're not beyond saving, you just don't have a proper protocol. Most people fail to overcome procrastination because they don't understand it. They just want a quick fix, but that's the problem. We can't change our behaviors unless we understand them. And that's why I created this video, to share my five-step protocol that's been incredibly effective for me in beating procrastination the moment it appears. But for the protocol to work, we need to ask ourselves, why am I procrastinating right now? Procrastination is always a result of our mind's desire to escape from negative emotions. Whether it's boredom, frustration, tiredness, annoyance, or a fear of failure, our mind uses every Jedi mind trick in the book to avoid those emotions. But if we dig deeper, we'll find that these are symptoms of three underlying causes. First is a lack of experience. Either we don't have the experience or knowledge to do the thing that we need to, or the instructions are unclear and we don't know how to get started. The summer before starting college, I wanted to get my first job so I could have some extra money before moving out of my parents' house. Every morning, I told myself, today I'm going to find a job. I'd pull up my laptop, struggle for a few minutes, start feeling overwhelmed, and then just default to playing video games or hitting up my friends or something. I never got a job that summer. I realize now that those emotions were just symptoms of the real problem. I had no clue how to find a job. I had no experience with it. I didn't even know what knowledge gap stood between me and having a job. Lack of clarity causes confusion, which leads to those negative emotions that cause procrastination. Second is level of effort. Effort goes both ways. Something that's too low effort makes us feel bored or gives us a false sense of security. And something that's too high effort makes us feel overwhelmed. If my professor assigns me a 50 page paper on like neurochemistry of cat brains or something, I'd feel hopeless and anxious about how many hours and how many hand cramps I'd suffer researching and writing that project. I'd end up procrastinating. On the other end of the spectrum, let's say that I study for my exams by rereading my notes 20 times over. I would feel so bored and annoyed having to do such a mindless and passive task, I would also just get distracted and procrastinate. The emotions we feel from the different levels of effort are also sometimes attached to our ego. Maybe you're a perfectionist and the fear of failure causes you to procrastinate doing things unless you're 100% certain you're going to succeed. Or maybe you feel threatened by difficult tasks because you don't want to be judged as being incompetent. And the third type of procrastination I call a low energy state. We all have a unique energy curve for when we're most focused and motivated to overcome procrastination. And our energy curve is affected by the time of day and the surrounding environment. So in college, I had the freedom to choose my own class schedule. I went to a big public university, right? So there were multiple options for biology and chemistry classes that I needed to take, you know, and being the degenerate party animal that I was back then, I decided that my first semester, I was going to take only afternoon and evening classes, you know, so I could stay up all night, play video games, party and sleep in and stuff. And most days I woke up around noon or even later. And when I went to class, I could barely focus or even pay attention, which didn't make any sense to me at all back then. Like, how was I this tired from doing absolutely nothing all day. Yeah, I didn't do very well my first semester. So the following semester, I changed things up and I started waking up way earlier and studying in the morning and that changed everything for me. I realized that my energy curve, my willpower to overcome procrastination was way easier to tap into in the morning. And I didn't feel that resistance of tiredness or laziness. So figure out what your energy curve looks like. As you can imagine, trying to force ourselves to overcome procrastination doesn't work if we aren't targeting the root cause. Some people can watch a David Goggins video and motivate themselves into action. But for most of us, we need a better approach. So here's the five step protocol that's worked amazing for me. Step one is to identify the emotion you're experiencing. Don't react, don't fight it, just sit with it for a second. What is this feeling? Is it fear? Is it overwhelm? Is it boredom? Is it anxiety or hopelessness? It might be more than one of them or all of them simultaneously. Sometimes we get so worked up that we can't think clearly enough to identify our emotions. In which case, there's actually an interesting physiologic mechanism we can tap into that temporarily clears our mind. So if the overwhelm or emotions are too intense, fill up a large bowl with ice water and dunk your face in it. Cold shower also works. This evokes something in us called the diving response. When ice water hits our face, our brain and body do like a hard factory reset. If you've ever done this, you know what I mean. But our heart like skips a beat, we hold our breath, and whatever thoughts that were on our mind instantly vanish. And then from this new place of peace, we can revisit that emotion from a much calmer perspective. There are other more effective long-term ways to strengthen our mind to detach from emotional states like meditation and exercise, which I also highly encourage making a regular practice of. Step two is to deconstruct the emotion. Now that we've identified the emotion, we need to break it apart and determine which of the three types of procrastination that we're dealing with.
dealing with. Is the procrastination coming from experience, effort, energy, or some combination of the three? Think about your current situation, you know, your environment and the responsibilities you have planned for the week as guiding prompts to determine why did that negative emotion appear now? Did you just get off a 10 hour work shift? This might be an energy type of procrastination. Are all your friends DMing you to play Valorant? Your brain is probably calculating a high level of effort to continue studying. Do you have the skills and knowledge to film a YouTube video? You probably hit an experience gap that's manifesting as overwhelm because you don't know the next steps to take. What emotional consequence is your mind trying to escape? These are some examples of questions to think about when deconstructing an emotion. And once you've deconstructed the emotion, move on to step number three. Create a clear plan of action that's so simple, you'd be stupid not to do it. Emphasis on clear and stupid. This is going to be a little different for each type of procrastination, but ultimately the idea is the same. Make the action plan so easy and the next steps so clear it's a no-brainer for you to get started. For example, for that ambiguous task of getting a job, do a brain dump of all the mini tasks that are part of that big task. Lay out everything you know to uncover those experience gaps and then build a plan around it. I probably need a resume, right? So how do I do that? I'll watch a YouTube video about how to write a resume. I'll get AI to draft a resume template for me. What do I do from there? Now I'll brainstorm all my work experiences and school achievements. Next, I'll have to find jobs to apply for. So I'll research local job centers, I'll ask my school counselor, you know, so on and so on. And at any point I run into an experience gap, I'll look it up or I'll ask someone. For the effort type procrastination, break apart the task into bite-sized actions. A 50-page paper can be broken apart into read an article, summarize the article, write one paragraph. If it's still too hard, make it simpler and make it stupider. <laughs> write one sentence, write one word. If I'm feeling low energy from exhaustion, then how can I create an action plan to tackle this tomorrow? Don't try to force studying right now. Just go take a hot shower, get to bed early, set an alarm for like 6 a.m., and then try again with a fresh cup of coffee and a clear plan of action. The whole idea of step number three comes from Brian Tracy's Eat the Frog. When faced with a daunting task, whether it's due to experience, effort, or energy, get your mind off of the negative emotions by focusing on a single action you can take. This step is definitely the most challenging and requires practice. There's an art to prioritization and goal setting, and it gets much more complicated than I'm letting on right now, but check out this video up here if you're interested afterwards. Step four, begin your action plan, even if it's not perfect. It's important to know that too much planning and researching is itself a form of procrastination procrastination, it's perfectionism. So once you've got a plan that's at least somewhat coherent, you know, maybe 60% complete, don't think too hard, don't allow that perfectionist tendency to override. Go dunk your face in ice water again if you have to, and just get started. It doesn't matter how perfect your plan is if you don't use it. The hardest step is the step from stillness. But once you start working, momentum will carry you over procrastination. There's this popular quote that I love by author Brad Stolberg, mood follows action. So just get working even if the negative emotions aren't completely gone because the good feeling of making progress will eventually catch up. Finally, step five, which is an often forgotten step, is to celebrate your ability to overcome procrastination. Be your personal cheerleader and praise yourself for doing something despite those negative emotions you felt. Fred Bryant, who's done research on the psychology of enjoyment and motivations, talked about the importance of savoring and acknowledging our wins, no matter how small they are. There's an intimate relationship between our brain and achievement. Achievement releases dopamine and other endorphins in our body. Remember that procrastination presents as negative emotions. So by celebrating our wins every step of the way, we're conditioning our brain to enjoy the feeling of overcoming resistance, to feel good for taking action. And this in turn will make it easier for us to continue doing so in the future. But also keep in mind that there is an important nuance between the idea of celebration and reward. A celebration is an experience. It's that internal euphoria we feel for accomplishing something. Like Steph Curry doing a shimmy after draining a three-pointer, or dapping up your boys after acing an exam. A reward is something external, like treating yourself to a new pair of shoes or playing video games for five straight hours. Focus on celebrations. Rewards can be useful, but be careful not to use them too often because then your brain will start to associate joy with the reward and not from actual accomplishment. And that is my five-step protocol. Now I want to make a disclaimer that this protocol call is an effective tool for overcoming the immediate battle against procrastination. However, there is no actual cure for procrastination. Just because we beat procrastination today doesn't mean we've conquered it forever and never have to worry about it again. Procrastination is a non-stop balancing act. We have to be attuned with our emotional state at all times. Every minute, our subconscious brain performs a mental calculation to assess the emotional damage of the current tasks. The long-term solution comes from doing internal work on ourselves and reflecting on our core values. People who seem to effortlessly dive into hard work are the ones who've identified 
identified their values and internalized them so deeply that taking action isn't even an option, it's a duty. So honestly, ask yourself, what do I want for myself? What does that person value? And how does that person spend their time? Once you've clarified that version of yourself, take full responsibility to become that person. Actually, let's take this a step further. Take personal and public responsibility for your goals by sharing them in the comments below. Why exactly do you want to beat procrastination? What do you think that's going to do for you? That way we can work together to reorganize our lives and eliminate procrastination. Now, if you still feel like your life is out of control, I'd highly recommend checking out this video over here. It's my full guide for dopamine detoxing that I use to help take back control of my life.